doing, continuing our series of talking to coaches and rowers out there in, in uh, all across America. We've talked to people in, in every part of the country. And uh, today we've got Stacy Applebaum, the head coach for Niski Una High School, Niski Una High School in Albany, New York. I, no, we're in Niski Una, the town Niske of Niski Una, New York, which is upstate New York, near Albany, uh, mm -hmm. up there in the, in the state's capital. So welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Mark. Thanks. Our series uh, here that we're putting on for AccuDoc is really talking about the positives and trying to make everything um, about the, our whole entire COVID year here, um, trying to find the positives that coaches and programs have been doing and exploring to keep rowing fun for their uh, athletes, if it's kids that they're coaching, or for the masters, keeping them involved, um, if it's on that front. So Stacy has been doing a great job. I've been following her and her team on Instagram and other social media, and they've got a, been doing a lot of fun things. So Stacy, why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh, you know, a little bit how you've, you, when you were able to start with your kids or when there was a downturn and just give us a little bit of background and then some of the fun things that you've been doing to keep it, keep it real for, for everybody this summer. All right. Well, things shut down for us on March 13th, just like it did for everybody. And uh, we very quickly, um, that afternoon, they announced school was closing. And we sort of had a feeling it was not going to open again on Monday. And we had all the kids take herbs home. Everybody, we got all the herbs out of the high school and we have about 30 of them. And so any athlete who wanted an herb was able to take one home for the whole spring, which was great. Um, and then we created a training program uh, for our varsity boys, varsity girls, and our, our middle school rowers. And it involved, um, training five days a week, uh, regular workouts. There were herb workouts, circuit, some running. Uh, you know, it's still pretty cold in the early days. Sure. So a lot of it was indoors, and then we moved outdoors. Every week we had a challenge, uh, a different kind of a challenge. One was uh, to use your Strava app and go for a bicycle ride and create a picture with the Strava map, um, which uh -huh. is really fun. Some kids that had a good time with that. It was very clever. Um, we had a, a scavenger hunt that they had to go along the path from the high school to the boathouse. And along it, we had left a little bag of chalk and some hand sanitizer. And they had to sign that they'd been there and take a picture of themselves doing something. Um, and that was great. And once they got to the boathouse, uh, they could sign their name on the boathouse wall in chalk. And we had a lot of kids get involved with that. Um, about two weeks in, we were, uh, the kids were starting to really miss the connection with their friends and with actually rowing. So uh, we took the trailer fully loaded from our trip to Florida, where we had a great week with you at your All-American Rowing Club. That was awesome. And we drove past every athlete's house on the team. And wow. And so we just honked the horn out front, waved, got to say hi to everybody, and it was great. They loved it. It just huge smiles on their face after sort of being locked up for, for a while. Um, that was a lot of fun. And so we also added in, uh, we called it More at Four, and we did an Instagram Live workout every day at 4 o'clock. It was a 30-minute circuit, varied um, and we recruited alumni to lead it. Um, I called everybody I knew <laughs> to lead a session, and it was great. Um, uh, so it, they were fun. They, some of them led them on cycles inside. Um, some did just body circuits. Uh, others did fancy routines. But they were great, and we had a lot of people tuning in for that. Um, and by the very end, we had our varsity athletes leading each other um, on that Instagram. So that was fun. That, that added a little, everybody could see each other and that was good. But not only was it fun, I'm sure they were actually getting a bit of a workout then too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and so, that was so the athleticism was certainly uh, the, the motivation behind the fun, right? 
Absolutely, absolutely. So they got a great little extra 30 minute workout. Um, a lot of kids did that in addition to the regular assigned workout. Some did it in place of, which was fine. Um, we just wanted to keep kids moving. And it was a great way to draw in alumni. So we had a lot of alumni who'd been sent home from college, uh, who were sort of looking for training modes as well. And they were able to jump in and lead some, and then they would come and follow as well, get the work out. Sure. So that got you through most of the uh, competitive spring season. And obviously yeah. all the competitions were canceled and, and mm -hmm. so on. And you had, but then you also have a very active summer program as well. So what were you able then to, to roll from we your, did. from that into the summer? Yep. So uh, we we were cleared to start rowing around June 15th. And so we opened up our program. Uh, we're fortunate that we have 15 singles, um, which is unusual for a high school program. And so we were able to switch over to singles right away. We have about 60, 65 kids rowing for the summer. So we created, uh, we have five shifts uh, that will go out for two hours. And the way we set it up was uh, everybody rode three times a week in singles. And the other two days a week were cross training days. And this is where the That's what everybody happened. needs to do. That's what everybody needs to do anyway, Stacy. So here you mm -hmm. are doing exactly what we should be doing all the time in the summer. All the time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so we had kids cycling. I think they, they logged more than 350 miles on bikes. Um, in the six weeks of the program and seven weeks, I guess we were out there. Um, and it was great. So we had some coaches who led, we had a couple of alumni who in exchange for being able to use our singles and row out of our boathouse for the summer, um, if they would lead some of these cross training groups and they were great. So we'd get, we'd get some days, 20 kids on bikes, um, going out in, in different groups, uh, to ride the trails in our area. What else did you do besides uh, bicycling and um, and rowing, obviously? Uh, so what else? Kayaking. Kayaking. We had, we had kayaks. We we had seven or eight kayaks. We got a grant to add kayaks to our fleet. And so the kids would go out kayaking on some days, uh, which is great. With, there are lots of cool creeks and waterfalls off the Mohawk River uh, where we are. So that was really fun. Uh, so I have to tell you, I'm a I'm an avid kayaker as well, and maybe you maybe you know that already. But I think I have five, five or six kayaks as well wow. as multiple rowing shells too. So I've started doing a lot of cross training in my with my kayaks as well, and it's really fun to actually paddle facing forward the same waterway that we often are facing backwards on. So I bet your kids also kind of found it interesting to see to see where they were going rather than seeing where they've been. They did, they did. And what was great was um, we rode by some islands and I'm always telling them stay away from the islands, stay away from the islands. But they could get closer in the kayak and see all the rocks <laughs> and, and realize why it was so important not to go over there. Um, yeah. so, so that was really good. Um, we also did a fair amount of hiking. Uh, you know, we're up close to the Adirondacks. And so we took three big hikes uh, up in the, in the mountains, and that was wonderful. So we also found some hiking trails right in the town of Niskiuna uh, that were wonderful treasures. And so we gave kids, one of the big things I liked about it is we gave kids tools for cross training on their own. You know, so many kids are like, oh, I don't have an erg, or I can't row today, I can't work out. And these are, are easy access activities that people can do. And so it was really good for them. That's perfect. I think oftentimes we forget about the whole uh, aspect of play. Yep. And with uh, when you and I were growing up, you know, my, our moms and dad just said, go outside and play. And right. now everything is so structured and uh, every kid feels like they have to be told how to play. So yep. I think probably part of what you have uh, uh, enabled your athletes to do is to actually go outside and play a little bit, figure mm -hmm. out that there's other things to do than just what the coach says or what the, what the right. you know, person in charge says. So congratulations. Right. That's cool. Thanks. So, so now here we are uh, in the middle of August and uh, school's about to start. 
and we're seeing uh, rowing events all over the Northeast obviously being canceled. Um, what what's kind of the plan moving forward for you and your and your team? What are you gonna well, What are you gonna do? Um, right now, our current plan is we are gonna continue this three days a week rowing and singles, two days a week of cross training. Um, we will have more limited time. Our school is going is planning on a hybrid model, so kids will be in school every other day and um, home every other day. So we will have two shifts every afternoon, um, an hour and a half each, and we use our singles. The, the cross training days, we won't be able to do the big hikes and those kinds of things. They'll probably be more circuit directed, running, some biking, uh, some kayaking, but not as, as big plans as some of the summer activities. Uh, that we did. Um, our hope is that as we're waiting until school started and they have a sense of infection rates and what's going on, and if school starts cleanly, we will allow kids to move into doubles and then quads. So those cross training days will drop off and they will become team build days. Excellent. And do you have any plans for any sort of uh either with other teams, you know, I mean, rowing is really a team. You're isolated as a team, uh, or you can be certainly, uh, except maybe at the launch point or something, but you can certainly manage that. Or have you had discussions with other coaches about uh, in the area about bringing kids, you know, not together, but having teams compete either kind of on a dual race schedule or something like that up in your area? I, we have. Um, we are part of Section 2. New York State is divided into, I think, 13 sections. I'm not sure. Um, but we're Section 2. And we have been meeting regularly through the summer, all the coaches of Section 2 on a Zoom meeting, to just sort of share what we're doing, what's working, what's not. Um, and we've talked a little bit about doing some work, scrimmage work in the fall, just uh, you know, one or two teams getting together. And, and racing in, in singles and small boats. Um, we're fortunate on the Mohawk River, we have two crews about a mile upstream and another about a mile downstream. And so we will run, um, we started this summer, we call it the Rail X, it goes from the railroad bridge back to our dock. It's about 4,000 meters. And so we've been running time trials on that all summer. And we'll continue that through the fall and invite the other teams on our river to join us. That sounds good. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of space for that uh, in our in our sport and with certainly within communities like yours, where you do have uh, various teams that aren't moving equipment. You know, it right. makes it very easily makes it very easy if you're just mm -hmm. rowing to a different part of the river. Exactly. Uh, I hope. I hope other programs hear that and, and can kind of think about doing those things and making rowing maybe a little more intimate um, mm -hmm. here this fall when the big regattas like the head of the Charles and the head of the Hooch and the head of the Schuylkill are all are all being forced to cancel um, yeah. their programs. So right. that's great. Yeah, yeah I will yeah. say one of the highlights of our summer, honestly, has been our Learn to Row program. I was originally very hesitant to do Learn to Row in singles on a river. On a lake, it's one thing because you're not moving, but it's a little different. And uh, we have two wherries, uh, two boats with pontoons and two piners, and they gradually move up you know, as they go through. This is the best summer of Learn to Row we've ever had. These kids, within a week, are out in singles without pontoons and loving it. Um, and some of the best rowing I've seen out of new kids uh, as well. And that has just been a, a surprise and a big boon uh, to our program this year. That's fantastic. I think that uh, certainly will resonate with a lot of folks where, you know, the traditional learn to row is putting all these little kids into eights and where they <laughs> don't really feel a whole lot when exactly. everything is moving in different directions. They have no idea what, uh, what they're contributing to the mess. Right. right. So, uh, I, I've always said, and I'm sure you have too, the single gives you instant and 100% feedback, whether it's exactly. uh, um, good or bad, it tells you what you are doing very quickly. So uh, 
that's total, a, that's total great. responsibility. Yeah, it's been one. It's been a wonderful, wonderful surprise. So. Yeah, I think also what you said earlier about your program already having a nice fleet of singles uh, and varying varying types of singles makes mm -hmm. it a makes it nice. So I'm sure there's other programs out there that are. Um, scrambling a bit to find equipment or to purchase equipment that will allow them to be more flexible in these kind of situations. Yeah. So you guys were, were fortunate in that, in that case. Yeah. Well, well, what we'd like to do, Stacy, is kind of continue this discussion. Uh, the other uh, coaches and program people that I've uh, talked to have, have uh, I've suggested that maybe we come back and vi revisit you in six to eight weeks and kind of see how the, the fall season has been progressing and if it's kind of gone through what you had hoped or if there were any other really great surprises um, on hopefully on the positive side again. Um, but if you'd be open to do that, we'd love to love to come at you again in maybe early October or something like that. Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. Sounds good. Well, this has been super. Again, we're talking with Stacy Applebaum from Niska Uni Crew up in uh, Niska Uni, New York. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. My, my pleasure, 100%. Thank you. You're welcome.